Hello, this is Dr. Heath Van Horn, and I just wanted to talk, uh, walk through through lab six. Uh, hopefully you got your lab open at the same time as this video. Uh, let's talk about the switch. So the first thing we're going to do is configure the switch so it's ready to run a network. So this is uh, how, what a switch looks like on Packet Tracer. And you can tell that it closely resembles the physical switch uh, that we use in um, the real world. So let's look at the configuration. So we go to the CLI and we enter configuration with config T, that's configuration with the terminal and we create a VLAN number six and we name it we call it lab six now that we've created the VLAN what we need to do is add some ports to the LAN so that way we can use it so if we look, you can see VLAN 1 is the default, and it has all the ports assigned. And VLAN 6 has none of the ports assigned. But you can also see that VLAN 6 is labeled Lab 6, and it is active. So what we do is we don't go into the VLAN. We go into the individual ports and tell them to assign themselves to the VLAN. So we configure T, and then we interface with Fast Ethernet 1, and then we enter switch port mode access, and then we say, hey, your access is going to be VLAN 6. And then once we do that, uh, we can exit. Uh, we also put no shut. Shut means shut down. No shut is the opposite. Stay on. All right, so we end. And now, uh, when we run our show VLAN, we'll see what has changed. All right, so now we do show VLAN. And now we can see VLAN 6, and it has port FA01 assigned to it. So it has moved from VLAN 1 to VLAN 6. And that means all the traffic that comes in on port 1 will be automatically routed to the VLAN number 6. So now we want to configure another one, because otherwise the computer is just talking to the switch. It's not doing anything. And so we pick another port. So I, I usually go with the odd number ports, because it's easier to uh, pull uh, the plugs in and out. The odd number ports are the ones on the top row, and the even ones are on the second row. And so I, I stick with the odd one. So here I'm programming uh, switch uh, port number three. And we're interfacing with port number three. We enter the switch port access. We say VLAN six. And we say do not shut off. And then we exit. And then we can see uh, the configuration again. And now with the VLAN, um, we need to configure the VLAN to have an IP address. Because the VLAN is just humming along. It's like, yes, we have all these ports. However, nobody can talk to us on the IP layer via IP address because we haven't assigned one. So we interface with the VLAN and we assign it an IP address and a subnet mask.
And in this case, the IP address is 10105100, and the subnet mask is a sitter 16. And so now the switch is configured, and you can see the VLAN that the protocol is down because we haven't hooked up a computer, but the LAN is up, and the IP address that's broadcasting is 10105100 with a sitter notation of 16. So now our switch is 100% configured. So we can close this. And now we're going to add a, a PC. This varies from the lab a little bit because in the lab we use virtual machines. However, since we're not in the lab, we have to use Cisco Packet Tracer, so, but you'll be able to see the association here. Alright, so if I do a lightning connection, which is an automatic connection, we don't get to choose which ports that gets connected to, and so that's not a good idea to use that, uh, not in Packet Tracer. So what we do is we got to delete that. And we got to do it manually. And so what we do is instead of using the lightning bolt, we use the solid copper straight through. And then we pick port 1 on the switch and one of the ports on the computer. And the computer IP address we set to 1010.50.1. And we still use the subnet mask of 16. And now we ping the uh, switch. And we should get the first one should fail. And the second one and subsequent one should pass. And that's exactly what happened. So we have good connectivity between the PC and the switch. So Ethernet packets will go between those two devices. So now let's add our second PC. And we know that's going to be on Fast Ethernet 3. Because that's what we set it up for. And then we go to the config panel. We'll go to configuration here. And you put in the IPv4 address. Of 101050.2. Since it is the second PC. And their subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. Which is a sitter 16. We don't have to mess with anything else. And so now we... We've set that, so now we go to the command prompt, and we try to ping the switch. And then we ping, what, it should fail the first time, and then it should pass. And then we'll ping the other PC. And that will pass automatically because we did the one failure earlier. So, and that is a fully established two PC, one switch network. The only thing I recommend you do is that you label all your components. When you click on one of these devices, you can only have one of their um, windows open at a time. And when that happens, Uh, you can lose track of what you're working on. And that doesn't help anybody. So it's always a good idea to label the, the name of the component and what their IP address is. And so that's what I do. So that way if I have PC1 open, I can look at PC0 and say, hey, this is what the settings are that I put that PC at. Otherwise you end up opening two windows at once, you, which are not allowed, and then you get mixed up about 
what is working where. So this one we're just labeling 101050.1. 10, and then we're, we should have called that one PC0, but, and then this one we're calling PC1, and it should be 101050.2. 10, and the only other thing that I would do after that is put your name on it and what this activity was doing, because you're going to want to look at your old work you put your name on it for me, so that way if I get files mixed up, I know who you are. And then also you put uh, the work description on there, so that way you know what you're working on. And that's it.